the madman. Let's open the pack, shall we? It only looks like I'm opening a lot of packs right now because I haven't opened a single pack yet. And I know it looks completely ridiculous to open this many packs on a free-to-play account, but this is like one month into an account, basically. Uh, I haven't even touched the quest for the last month at all. So, one month of doing all the quests on a daily basis, one arena every day, and uh, like a few of the brawls. Uh, so as usual, I'm going to pick the free-to-play run based on the cards I get. Uh, however, it is very likely for it to end up being mid-range hunter if by default just because that's the best budget deck right now in which case like my run to legend is like nearly guaranteed it's like super easy so you might even think about possibly i can make more than just one uh free to play deck it's possible So far, these cards haven't been very exciting. There was some study done, by the way, about the art of opening packs. Uh, every... because of the legendary pity timer, and by the way, I'm almost guaranteed a legendary due to the sheer amount of... Uh, mean Streets of Gadgetzan packs I have. In fact, if I don't open a Legendary in the Mean Streets of Gadgetzan packs, I believe I had about 37 of them, I absolutely should buy packs one at a time until I get that Legendary. Because you're guaranteed a Legendary uh, every 40 packs, at minimum. Uh, it turns out to be optimal strategy to open packs until you hit a Legendary, and then after that, like, uh, it'll be the longest amount of time before hitting another Legendary. For those curious about how my free-to-play uh, arena runs went, that was for the purposes of the arena leaderboard. That was uh, during the month of March, and I did manage to get get barely on the top 100 uh, with a average win rate of 6.97. There are individual uh, card pack pity timers, which is why it's very unoptimal strategy to open several packs, uh, but it is good to open packs until you get a legendary and then possibly consider opening another pack if you're really trying to min-max your legendary acquisition rate. And yes, uh, because last month was the release of Angoro, uh, I delayed the free-to-play until this month, so two months ago I did the arena runs, and then I just let these packs sit for a while. I was like, okay, we're going to put that on hold, and Goro is really cool. Uh, we're going to look back into this at May, and now it's May. Or maybe it's not May if you're watching this in the future.
Shaky Zip Gunner like could make a budget mid range deck too. Uh, Hunter, a lot of Cabal Talon Priest. Those are good cards. We're gonna actually practice optimal strategy if we have not opened a legendary in these. Oh, there we go. Knuckles, free to play Hunter. By the way, I mean that doesn't even make the cut for mid range Hunter, but cool card. Dragging it off. So after getting a Legendary, Pity Timer is reset, and you can obviously get Legendary before you get 40 packs, but like the chance increases as you open more packs, so it's pretty unlikely to open another Legendary, but you never know. Two Dirty Rats in these packs, those are pretty good cards. Do you want to carry Knuckles to Legend? Noticed a bunch of Jade uh, Druid stuff. That's actually a pretty good budget deck as well. And the uh, Ungrow packs, all obtained through promotional type stuff because uh, I didn't play in an arena when Ungrow packs were given out, which is unfortunate because Ungrow packs are really cool. Decent chance that a decent amount of this gold goes into uh, purchasing Ungoro packs, but also it's possible that the gold will go into purchasing two wings of an adventure. Uh, because if I'm going to end up building mid-range hunter as a priority, then it is recommended to get Kindly Grandmother, and that would be like a very big investment of gold, 1,400 gold for basically two Kindly Grandmothers. Lack of crawlers and razor mauls, those are all good. We'll uh, look at the collection of cards I have and see what we're going to go with next. Olvier Warden, that's a nice one. Bonus 95 dust for my uh, first disenchanting. I almost have enough for a legendary. Kill all my grand tournament cards. I don't really plan to ever go into uh, wild with this account. And we're not ever going to really use Polymorph 4 or Seal of Champions, 1600, or Dragonhawk Rider. And then from standard, let's get rid of all our golden cards that we don't have duplicates of. Cash in that cash. And disenchant one of these safely. Drink the tea. Wonder why Getaway Co. didn't shift. That's weird. Okay, so we've got 2,000 dust to play with. That's a very nice round number. Alright, so let me start off by uploading the Hunter deck I played in the tournament and see how many cards I'm missing from it. Two high main, unleash, rat pack, eagle horns, deadly shot, hyena, crawler, two macaw. And kindly grandmother is the expensive thing at 1400 gold. Though I do have uh, 2100 gold. Let's see how much of this uh, deck I have just for funsies. Leroy and Pat. Uh, Leroy and Captain Greenskin aren't even essential. Ravisaur runs really bad in this deck, as it turned out. No, yeah, looks like I'm missing uh, quite a few of these. It's still doable, especially if I don't craft the 3200 dust of the other stuff. Let me check the Hearthstone, Dreamhack, Austin deck list. Uh, Hearthstone top decks lists the dust cost of quite a few of the decks. I was looking at through them. Looks like Quest Rogue is actually pretty inexpensive. <laughs> Casually build a Quest Rogue deck. 
Well, let's uh, let's start off by. Oh, by the way, this is really funny. By the way, so there's this is like one of the. I was just catching up on this on Hearthstone. It was uh, on the Reddit, and I was told this from DreamHack. This is the one rogue recipe deck which is completely useless if you don't have the caverns below. So, let's suppose I want to go ahead and play this. Like, yeah, this looks reasonable as a start. Uh, let's replace missing cards, so we're gonna have to replace our caverns below here. Assassinate, that seems good. So, that's slightly unfortunate. And then you have your uh, deck with Stone Tusk Boar and Gabzan Ferryman. Let's see how much of this I have. The nice thing about uh, the deck tracker is after exporting these cards, it'll also tell you how much dust you need in order to complete the rest. You need uh, 4,560 dust to craft the missing cards. Two prep, two shadow step, a firefly, two glacial shard, patches. Patches in the caverns below are uh, 3,200 out of the 4,560 dust. But they are both essential to the deck. I would need to gather four, uh, about 2,500 more dust. You can crack open the knuckles for 400. I'll go ahead and start by saying that we're not going to create buff paladin so I can complete, so I can dismantle the uh, outfitter here. Let's see how much uh, dust we can accumulate first of all, I guess, before uh, really looking into things. I think Taunt Warrior is definitely out of reach for. Uh, Starters. I'll go ahead and disenchant this for now. I don't think we're gonna build a Cthune deck. Not to mention, I actually don't have any Cthune synergy apparently. Somehow. Just didn't open any. Oh, I only opened two uh, old god packs, that's one. So, I think the uh, most amount of gold I would spend on. Uh, adventures would be 1400 so I can definitely safely open six packs uh, I think I'll start off by opening six Unguro packs you've got a lot of gold yes I do plus uh, getting the Unguro stuff is more exciting anyway since it's the new stuff I'm going to buy them kinda slowly at five apiece until I open a legendary, and then I'll swap to the other expansion once I open a legendary. That's the strategy. If I don't get any legendaries, I'm just gonna keep opening Ungaro packs with the rest of the gold. Statistically, like, my chances of getting a Legendary from Unguro are extremely high. Uh, because I will have opened approximately 27 Unguro packs. If I spend all of my gold on Unguro. And if I don't get a Legendary, I'll eventually get, like, 13 more packs through the play of the game anyways. Oh, there's the crab. That's uh, good for the hunter. There's the glacial shard. That's good for the rogue. Igneous elemental if I want to switch up the rogue a little bit. I already have one. Primordial Drake. It goes towards the Taunt Warrior fun. Come on. Legendary me.
The legendary is just around the corner. Oh! Umbra. Alright, well. Unfortunate. But hey, 400 dust. Most of the time it's gonna be 400 dust. We got it. We got there. And it would be good strategy now to switch over to the classic packs uh, because I have most recently opened a legendary in the Anguro set and a legendary in the Mean Streets set. So my pity timer is uh, most recent on the classic set. To some extent, this is a little bit unlucky that I got Knuckles and Umbra as my legendaries because if you are lucky and you get a legendary that happens to fit into a deck specifically, you basically made 1200 dust towards that deck uh, over disenchanting a legendary for 400. So, never lucky. Uh, that said, given that this is a free-to-play account, I obviously intend on disenchanting the useless items. And Knuckles, unfortunately, you are useless. And Spirit Singer Umbra, unfortunately, you are in fact a one-star card. This one, by the way, was a tough one to call. Not everyone thought it was a one-star card, but I boldly called it correctly a one-star card. Hmm, here is Glimmer Root. It's actually a pretty good card. I go ahead and just disenchant all the uh, cards that don't actually see play right now. Except that one because it might actually fit into a budget mid-range hunter deck. Yeah, sorry Hatchling. I don't think I have enough elemental synergy cards to justify keeping elemental stuff. This deck's kind of interesting. Eh, I'll hold on to that one. This actually saw a tiny bit of play in uh, tournaments. I think it's terrible still, but we'll keep it around. I don't think this actually saw any play in the Spike Ridge Steed deck, but I'm going to look that up real fast. So some madman actually brought a Paladin deck with a uh, Light Fuse Stegadon into the deck. It's just dumb. There's no way that'll ever work. I'm even, for now, keeping the cards that like might have potential in the future, so I don't have to recraft them. Uh, cards like Invenom Weapon or Shadow Sensei could easily be good in the future, so I'm not going to disenchant them yet. And then there are uh, deck archetypes that might just be unreasonable to put together in, a, uh, in some amount of time. I'm thinking about Humongous Razor Leaf. Can I build this deck? Man, that deck's actually pretty inexpensive. Yeah, we won't disenchant our Humongous Razor Leaf after all. That is a surprisingly inexpensive deck. My goal is to build like three free-to-play decks. I'll go above and beyond on this one. I don't know why I kept this guy around for so long. Okay, 4,900 dust. We're very close here. Darn, didn't open any Mimic Pods, never lucky. Uh, let's see. 
And I want to also... We should disenchant the Volcano Sword, I guess. Part of me was keeping it around because it could legitimately see play in mid-range hunter, but nah. Alright, so I only need 4,400 dust to craft the remaining cards in Quest Rogue. I still kept my path pretty open because uh, this is like the big branching path now. Uh, do I go Quest Rogue, do I go mid-range hunter, or do I go other? So I have 5,000 dust, and I know this looks like a lot of dust to have for a free-to-play run, but just remember, it is only this is gathered in only one month of play. So I do consider it a free-to-play run just because I begin day one of Constructed with 5,000 dust. I think it fits the definition of free-to-play. I obviously haven't spent any money on the game, and I haven't even been playing the game for that long. It's like one month of play, one arena a day, on average. Uh, the other path I could take is mid-range hunter. Mid-range hunter is much less expensive than rogue. Uh, I can build the mid-range hunter list for only 1,000 more dust. Uh, without the kindly grandmother. And instead of the Kindly Grandmother, I would go ahead and replace Kindly Grandmother with Trog Beast Rager. Which is perfectly fine. And might even arguably be an improvement in some ways. So that actually means that I can build both decks, even, if I stretch out a little bit more. So why not build both? And there's even one more deck out there that's possible. This uh, ended up being a lot less expensive than I thought it was. We can actually build a tournament lineup of three decks. Okay, so without crafting the two uh, legendaries, that's 3,200 less. Oh no, the Barnes is from Karazhan. So without crafting Elise, which is not even good in this deck, I would only need about 2,000 dust for this one. Do we want to do super hard mode? and try to hit Legend on a free-to-play account with three different decks? The Madman. Wait, is Purify from Karazhan? No! Purify's from Karazhan. Disaster. I forgot. Dang, if only Purify was... Oh, Purify's so good. No. Once I put the patches in the Rogue, let's see how expensive the Warrior takes to get there. I don't even have a good uh, list at the moment, so let me find a more recent list. When you craft one card and it fits into two. Maybe the goal should be to win a tournament with uh, these three decks. Is that insane? That's not even that insane. We can do it. Like, enter a open tournament with this list of three and uh, see if I can win. It'll be free-to-play tournament victory, the series. I need Leroy. That's kind of tough in this one. It does look like I'm missing a lot of cards, but it's not that expensive. It's just it's just 5,000 dust, but I'm going to get a 1,600 dust subsidy because I'm going to craft patches. So it's just 3,400 dust. So here's the plan. We're going to craft the quest rogue deck. I'm going to need a little bit of dust for the uh, hunter at the end, uh, but I think we'll get there through completion of quests, and then we'll kind of alternate between Quest Rogue and Hunter. And you'll have the amazing experience of seeing that I not only have one, not just one free-to-play deck, but two free-to-play decks, of which the cards don't even like match up that much. We're going down this path. Rogue has uh, consistently been my worst class for a while, so I look forward to actually training in this deck. What a world we live in, where I'm going to use dust to craft... Well, I, if only Wisp were a common... Oh, it is a common. No, no, it's not. It's like a default common, but if it were craftable. Oh, wait, it is craft. Wait. How do I have two Wisps already? Oh, I got really lucky opening Wisps in common packs. 
If I didn't, then I'd be spending 40 dust to craft a wisp on a free-to-play account, and that would be amazing. So pretty lucky there. Pretty lucky. How lucky that I happened to open wisp. And now we get to the expensive part of the list. Uh, get ready to drop all your dust to prep. I think in my other free-to-play run, I have actually disenchanted preparation. So if I continued off of the other free-to-play run, I'd have like an extra 300 dust towards preparation. Uh, patches. R. What a life we live in, where the free-to-play uh, deck crafts two legendaries. In before you say, pay to win, whatever. The fact of the matter is, we took a relatively new account of one month old, and we have all this stuff. It just depends on uh, how good and hardcore you are, I suppose. And the normal player is going to be able to obtain all this stuff in two months pretty easily, I would say. So it's like one of those infomercials where, you know, you are supposed to put something in a microwave for a few minutes or an oven for a few minutes, but then they just like put it in and they close it and then in like another oven, they take it out and it's like already heated. That's basically what we're doing. I didn't expect this to be the direction that I was going to go down when I uh, started the free-to-play. Because remember, the free-to-play run happened before Ungoro even came out. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I'll probably just build some kind of mid-rangey deck. Uh, never did I imagine that I would actually be creating a... Like, this is kind of a very techy deck. Free-to-play decks are typically uh, not into this sort of like category, so very cool that it's allowed to be happened. I'm ready for a standard game after completing my first quest. Can you imagine this? A new player just happens to have a brilliant idea. I've got an idea. I'm going to just uh, craft this quest deck here and then go tear up the ladder with it. Huh. All right. Well, Let's see how this deck does over at rank 25 with my new account. Uh, I know the basics from how to play this deck from secondhand playing against it, but I do also generally know that the strategy is to only keep the bounce cards. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to this free-to-play run a lot as well, because I actually have... This is probably the relative to play capability of other legend players. I have not even touched this deck because I was letting everyone else perform the science last month. And now here I am. Uh, let's see what this uh, rank 25 priest is going to do. Uh, looks like I'm going to try to complete with Igneous Elemental. And welcome, uh, welcome to the game, Valentina. Have a good time, man. At least to a new player, this must look like a rank one, uh, zero star quest, one star quest. Now, where are you gonna see silver? Oh, mind blast! Ouch! Ah! So I can complete the quest with the two uh, one two elementals, but against the control uh, player, which is presumably this priest, I am going to want to ah. Oh, an archer. I'm going to want to try to bounce Firefly or Novice Engineer for the valley. Oh, there is that Silverback Patriarch. There we go. Hmm. Melt away. Here we go. It's back. Stonehill Defender. Stonehill Defender. Finally, Silverback Patriarch is back for the revenge. Oh, I... 
Oops. Okay. My hand is too oh, that was a bad card to burn. <laughs> uh, this, all right. It's all right. I'm letting him win, right? Here we go. Drink with me, friend. That was actually a terrible card to burn, but the wisp was a great card to draw. Finish the quest. Wisp, wisp, uh, through shadow stuff. Yeah, I could have. Yeah. This is gonna be a learning experience for all of us. I'm sorry, Valentino. Challenge accepted. I don't think any quest rogue has ever managed to do a trade into Crystal Core. I don't know if that even ever happens. Welcome to Hearthstone. Technically against a better player, I would not have uh, filled up the board because of Dragonfire Potion. But he's running cards like Silverback, Patriarch, and Mind Blast, so I recognize this as the default pre-stack. I wonder. We must cleanse the Sunwell. One shot, one. I have a lot to learn about this deck also. I know you're supposed to keep Fairy Man. I know you're supposed to like toss most everything else. I do need to spend some time to study a Mulligan Guide. Uh, you keep all the balance, I believe you Mulligan everything else. Unless you're against control, then you want Novice Engineer. I think Firefly. Uh, no, it probably doesn't make the cut. Because uh, what you want to do is you want to draw the nuts of the shadow step. I think you actually want to just fire flash. Uh. Wow, I have a lot to learn with this deck. I think Firefly would have been a reasonable play. Oh, that's very scary. Oh, wow, that hand. If it weren't for this quest, I would look like a new player. Ooh. Actual not free to play card deck. I mean, as a not basic card. I remember when we were doing a free-to-play run way back and everyone was like, lol, free-to-play with you, Sarah. Now I've gone a step further. We've got uh, not one, but two legendaries and it feels scumbaggy, man. But my conscience is clean here. I know in my heart that this is a free-to-play run. And free-to-play is now extending its definition to something along the lines of a deck that you could reasonably get in about, like, one month of serious play, like, really serious play, or two months of casual play. No, I actually don't know what to do in a situation like this. That is the right play against control, I think. I don't need to bounce that shard because I still have a bounce and like I have a shard in my hand. I can complete the quest with either Glacial Shard or Firefly and in the case that I want to complete it with uh, Firefly that's fine. So the plan is to play out the rest of the Glacial Shards next turn and then on turn 6 play the quest along with a Firefly or Flame Elemental.
Wasted a 5-5, could have frozen the worm. Um... Yeah, that's mostly true. Plays around AoE, I guess. How is this better than completing the quest on 4 and, com and playing the quest on 5? Yeah, it might not be. Wow, the counterspell nightmare. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. That would have been pretty good. Chill out. Oh. Chill out. Here we go. Some good stuff. I hope you like my invention. Oh, patches. Wait, do I have lethal? Mmm, no. I can set up lethal. That's worth. Here we go. Wait, is that even worth it? It's not actually worth it. Yeah, it's worth it to set up, like, lethal from hand. I drew into deck hand, right? Yes. Wait, did I have... No, I don't think I have lethal. Hmm. We're just gonna... be a bit of a monster here. Oh, oh, man. Alright. The buck stops here, huh? Oh, crap. He's like, enough bullying. What a hero, man. He's going in. It's the protector of the weak, Blink. That was fortunately the least bad card that could have gotten pulled for me. Like we're gonna try to complete the quest with Novice. Some have said that this matchup is excellent for Quest Rogue, but I myself have found it actually in favor of Warrior. Uh, this is part of the testing that I hope to, uh, do with time. Uh, looks like I'm getting the beats right now, though. I'll probably need to do a prep vanish this game. Uh, most likely novice prep vanish. I could play novice here blind and just hope to get lucky, but... Uh, that would be ridiculous. Yeah, especially if he develops something here. Speak to me. Mind if I roll me. Yeah, you definitely have to prep vanish. This is uh, slightly budgeted, it looks like. I hope you like my invention. Hmm. Maybe I can wait one turn. Nah. So next turn is going to be Novice, very Novice, oh, okay, Whew. that was the best one. Yeah, some, uh, some danger of just losing there. Well, yes, of just losing, pretty much. Oh, prep, always lucky. Ta-da! Ooh, South Sea. I have an axe to grab. I'm not ready. Okay. Time to take control. I'm a child 
judgment. Here we go. Wait a second, I did that in uh, that was probably in the wrong order. Melt away. No, it was probably in the right order. Yeah, it's hard to say. Not entirely confident, actually. Drink with me, friend. I had to decide last minute whether or not to do that. It makes it weaker against sleep against the fishes because he can do that. Uh, he can hit another five five with it. I'm actually, I think it was wrong to attack there, but yet. It gets an extra five damage. Why didn't I bounce a charger? Well, I mean, each uh, each firefly you bounce gets you two five fives. I still have to figure out the balance between value and like charging. Again, I am kind of new to this deck. I don't think this play was necessarily strictly wrong. Uh, I just decided to go for value instead of. Uh, it was probably wrong. I, would, I I definitely have too much value in my hand. I I was playing around brawl, and I was like, huh. I kind of want to have more stuff in case of Brawl, right? Nope, oh, have a charge anyways. Never punished. Here we go. Oh, right! Why did I attack? I, I set myself down to, like, lethal. Yeah, that's true. I should probably have hit that with the, uh... Yeah. Okay. Do I have lethal here? 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Uh, not yet. Challenge accepted. Oh, I should have froze him. Okay, well freezing him means I don't get lethal now. That's good. Here we go. One, three, four, ten. So I can never go deck hand brew deck in uh Okay, so this would probably be right now. Keep it in hand next time. So I have lethal set up with deck hand vanish deck hand hit. A messy game, but we got there. Uh, to some extent, it's kind of good to have the messy games be in the training grounds. We might have been using like budget second-rate bruisers instead of brawls. Who knows? No, almost mulligan the best card in the deck. Gotta level my instincts here. I, I feel like I could become a genius at playing the deck. I'm not entirely sure how good you can be at the deck, but definitely there's some finesse to the deck that isn't immediately obvious. It is finished. Go back and cry, Panduin. Oh, Cthulhu? Cthulhu with that taunt? Oh no! What am I gonna do?
Hmm, are we going to try to complete the quest with Glacial Shard? I'd like to wait. This is a pretty bad hand. For all the uh, insanity uh, of earlier, I've been getting some pretty good hands with Rogue. I mean, this is a bad hand, obviously. Well, no, it's not even a bad hand. I have Fairy Man and Shadow stuff. I just need a card to go with it. Hmm, play around uh, Northshire, I guess. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. Are you All right. Well, Basil Shard is looking better now. Go for it, yeah. And I also think we go ahead and play Wisp. There's a slight downside to playing Wisp, which is AoE, but the upside is you get a 5-5 five, five attacking. Yeah, risk reward seems to make sense. Unless I was playing on Vanishing next turn. If I end up playing Vanish here, then I did a strictly dangerous play. In short, lol me. Alright, I'll take a lol me. I hope you like my invention. Tortola, preserve us! Well played. Thune has taunt taunt. Spooky. So we want to bounce this, so this one should take the most damage. Straps, I guess. sure I didn't have lethal. Yeah, I don't have lethal. Here we go. I guess the art is how many uh, minions you keep on the board. Seems right. Mm, that might be wrong. I should have put on uh, another one to threaten lethal. Just like a uh, burn mage, it's important to have uh, threatening lethal. A lot of ways to get lethal. But... I hope you like my invention. Hmm, punished. Kind of. Sort of punished. Well, that's definitely useful on board this time around. I am uh, newish to the deck, so forgive me. I must consider. Five, ten, twenty, five short again. All right, here I have this. That was a very inconsistent play by me, actually. 
I guess if I was playing to win... Uh, yeah. I'm playing inconsistently in the sense that, like, I still have lethal, but this time I'm just impatient. So, I would... This, uh, this admits that the last turn was wrong. Well played. Well played. Oh, he has a chance at winning. <laughs> that would've been pretty awesome. There was a chance. Oh, taunt! Oh, right. Okay. Your logic implies an account with a three-year daily play with a very extensive collection, but that never-received money investment would also count as a free-to-play. That's true, and it would be. So, it's all about the meaning of the phrase you attach to it. I guess I would be willing to generally accept any deck that is about 5,000 dust or lower to be achievably played by someone who's like, played on a casual basis for two months. Uh, even faster if you just buy the welcome pack for 10 bucks. So, I mean, that that doesn't mean free to play anymore, right? If you spend 10 bucks, but... Even without it, you get to the deck in time. I don't actually think I'm gonna lose this game. Who wants to play for two months without crafting any cards? You don't have to. Uh, that Hunter deck, by the way, uh, the Hunter deck costs 2,000 dust, which is half as much as this, which means you can start off as a Hunter and then like complete the Hunter by the month. So that's something like I could also do, start a completely new account, but I have this one lying around with all the cards already. I think uh, some people want to see me do the climb with absolute zero start and then build towards that hunter. Uh, but I'm just deciding to do it this way. Of which means I'm not going to show every single game all the way up to Legend. We're going to like cut and splice and use a bit of Hollywood magic. I have a plan for when I reach rank 17, you see. Could just use patches and send it into the three two. Maybe Fairy Man, Fairy Man was right. Huh. So I would go Fairy Man, Fairy Man, and the next turn Fairy Man Brewmaster. Someday I'll be just like you. Hmm. Alright, we're gonna activate it with Wisp. And I should even play this before I play that, shouldn't I? So, possible play. Preparation Vanish. Uh, well, getting the Fairyman back in my hand is arguably good, right? Well, arguably bad because I have already too much. No, arguably good because I can just bounce patches all the time. Uh... Isn't this a double-double somehow? If I was uh, entering 7 mana, I'd want the Fairy Man to be on the board because then I could go uh, Wisp, Fairy Man, uh, Caverns, but because I am entering 6 mana, I can't get the Caverns with anything on the board. Well, unless I wanted the 2 3 on the board. I actually very well might have wanted to have that. I also just realized that I'm playing this deck without backstabs, which is uh, as the deck is built, but it's not that common to run it without backstabs.
it's kind of uh, funny to be like, oh crap, I'm running a version without backstab. Uh, this is where you really notice it. So many options. I wonder if there was a better way to play this game. Yeah, I'm actually too slow here, up against just random stuff. There had to be a different line. I think uh, I should have started with turn 4, bounce, bounce. Well, turn 4, bounce, bounce. Turn 5, bounce, brew? Turn six. I hope he has no burn. He's still in this one. I'm just kind of trusting Shoop here on the no backstab call. And Shoop by trust. Backstab's a crutch. You hate drawing uh, cards that aren't 5-5s five later in the game. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a medical. Uh, for a different field, perhaps. I wish for more wishes. I'll have to do a little bit of research into if the backstab is better or worse the no backstab it's definitely unclear oh the shame your magic shall not save so turn 4 bounce Ferryman, Ferryman, play two Ferryman, turn three, Ferryman, Brewmaster, I mean turn five, turn six, I'm kind of in the same spot still. I can play a Ferryman, but I can't play a thing, uh, uh just bad draw, I guess. Not having backstab hurt a lot. <laughs> 